Welcome back to Crazy Ball TV. Thank you so much for joining me on LFC Vibes. I appreciate you joining me. Thank you for the new subscribers. Hey, please share, subscribe, like, notification bell as usual. Uh, let's Today, we're just going to chop it up with LFC versus, uh, or should I say, Southampton versus Liverpool uh, at uh, St. Mary's. And uh, we'll dig in in Arsenal for a little bit, you know. They played yesterday versus Newcastle. But uh, LFC today, I mean, we knew what Klopp was going to do. Uh, when I was on Chris Can show, he asked me, what, do you, what kind of lineup you think his, you know, Klopp is going to have? And we did say he's going to make changes. We knew for sure Salah and VVD and Fab was not going to play. But I didn't know he was going to make that many changes, you know. I was at least expecting Hendo or maybe Keita to start, but this man just went completely beating or whatever you want to call it. And that's the thing with Clock. He trusts his players. And a lot of times we say his Achilles heels is he, sometimes he trusts his players to a fault. You know, he gives them multiple, multiple, multiple chances for them to get back to their possibly best. And today he showed, he, I mean, that lineup, let's talk about the lineup. Of course, Allison in goal, go, go mess, that was expected. I was, ex, you know, Ibo and uh, Matip, that was expected. Simicast, that was expected. Um, Milner playing six, that threw me off. I think Grace did say that he, he was thinking that he was going to play number six. And then Jones and Elliot at the same time. I was expecting Jones to start maybe earlier to have something to, you know, I did say on my last show that he will have something to say about it. But he trusted the youngest, you know, with the veteran behind them. And then he had the front three, which I literally thought that maybe Origi should have started over Jota. But, you know, he went with uh, Jota, Bobby, and uh, Minamino. And I did say Minamino will have something to say. The fact that he knows Southampton also. Uh, and the lineup was at, and there's a lot of changes. So when Liverpool usually do that kind of changes, that means we don't, our free flow is not there. Our passes are sometimes a little bit off and it takes us a little bit longer to be able to, you know, get on our best. But this one, the game started, I was very impressed with what Liverpool would do. The ball was moving nicely, it was very easy on the eyes, very nice to watch if we're neutral. And then they scored off a foul that I believe that the ref should have called it. He started right there. Okay, let's just say even the ref didn't see it. And he thinks he, uh, the defender touched the ball. But he fouled the player too to get the ball. That is a foul. And the fact that VAR did not look at it, that is also so, so kind of frustrating because they should have looked at it and said, hey, that is a foul. You at least... Go look. You know, I don't want to sound like an Arsenal fan, but personally, that should have never been a goal. They scored, you know, I mean, from Redman, that's his first goal of the season. That, that cracker was nice. I mean, I'm also a little bit frustrated. Our our defenders, they were too laxy when they let him move the ball like that. At least somebody should have been in front of him. If he's going to shoot, it better be a crazy shot. And it was a crazy shot, and he scored. So a lot of times, you can't fault the goalie because that's a crazy goal i mean those goals what can you do you know you just have to give it up to the forward or the attacker you know but you know it didn't frustrate liverpool liverpool got back in a group of things they also fell back we were controlling the ball first half we created a few chances i think we should have scored a little bit you know maybe one or two goals in the first half but you know it's it's what it is we had control the ball movement was good i like what i was seeing it's just basically mimicking when we have the big boys up front. We will create a lot of chances, and a lot of times we don't put a ball in the back of the net. And then when uh, second half came in, he kept the lineup. Actually, before we went to halftime, Gomez made a tackle, uh, you know, a slight tackle where he rolled. I think he sat on his ankle, which I was very concerned that it wasn't his knee. But thankfully, it was just his ankle. Yes, I know it hurts, but it's much better than his his knee, because this man has gone through way too many uh, issues with knees, you know, right? We don't want him to go into any more injuries. He got up, he was able to walk on his own. I know Henderson came in, Milner moved, shifted to the right as a right back, and then, you know, Hendo took over for uh, as number six. Um, so second half, 
same team with the exception of uh, Hendo, we didn't we didn't miss a step. We didn't miss a step. And the, the passes on the right between Hendo, I know I won't say Hendo, but Milnamino and uh, Bobby and George. I mean, that ball, that goal, and I think even Elliot has something to do with it. Uh, my brain is fried. Um, it, it, was, it was beautiful. That goal was crazy. He hit that thing like, you know, and that's the thing with Minamino. When he gets... He he has it. And the thing is, I don't know why Klopp was not able to pull out of him. He will show you that flashes of brilliance where you'd be like, this is the reason why we brought him from uh, Red Bull Salzburg. And sometimes he doesn't show it. It's like he gets shy or something. But you could tell there's an assassin in there. You know, he, he's, he's a great person, you know, and the goal was sick. And when we scored the goal, you know, we were able to even have more confidence to even move the ball even a little bit faster. I think that when we score the goal, no, they say goal changes everything. When we score the goal, our movement got better. We were able to attack him. We had him on a chokehold. We, I mean, we were pressing and pressing and pressing and pressing until we got that corner where, you know, big man Matip put the ball in the corner, you know, into the, the, the net. Yeah, somebody will say, well, that's luck. Hey, you got to sometimes create your own luck. And you know, as Liverpool, we have a mentality monster. So we're going to keep pressing and pressing and pressing until the final whistle goes. And my boys did not, you know, uh, they, they did not let me down on that part because they kept pushing it. You could see everybody was not wanting to lose that day or even draw at Southampton. And they did very well not to do that. I think Claw brought in Keita for Elliot, which... Keita came in, he was able to control the ball, midfield a little bit. I think that we were losing a lot of balls from midfield. They decided to attack us now, especially when we went up. They they came out and they came in at us. Ibo was just immense. Uh, Ibo was just, oof, that man. That man is going to be a problem for forwards moving forward. And he's learning from the best. He got Matip and, of course, the big boy, big man, VVD out there. You know, so it's 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 great to see his progression and every game, every game. I saw that on Twitter. Every game he plays, you could see where this guy's ceiling is not even. We haven't even seen his ceiling yet. Uh, so it was very exciting to watch him. Simikas did very well. Uh, Matip, of course, the elder state man. You know, he was always nonchalant, but I was very frustrated when he gave the hospital pass to Milner, which almost got his ankles broken. Uh, he sometimes he does that and it's very frustrating. Uh, Gomez, he was okay, but he was solid, you know. Although the goal did came from his side, by the time we had pressed high, so you know we got beat. Jones played well. I was very impressed with Jones. I thought he, in the first half he was losing the ball a little bit too much, but Jones was very very uh, impressive. I was very very impressed with Jones. Elliot showed that. He still got it. He just need more games. He really, really, really need more games. He did very, very well. I was very excited. I was very excited seeing him in there. And it didn't look like he missed a step. It just looked it just that you could tell that the skill is there. It's just it's not coming out because he hasn't played enough. So I'm telling you, man, when preseason comes, Liverpool is going to be crazy. Oh, man, I'm so excited. Uh, you know, we got the boy Cavallo. So coming in, Diaz is going to get a preseason. Oh, we put Shawmini in there too. Over. And of course, we did saw Bobby and brought in um, oh, the man Origi, which he made a few runs. But, you know, by the time he came in, there's not that much he can do. But, you know, as a striker, especially him playing right dead in the center, he needed more time to be able to express himself and probably, you know, worry more of the defenders. Because Southampton has a strong D. It's just sometimes we don't know. They are accustomed to some serious ass whooping every once a season. And I was hoping this was going to be the customary uh, 9-0. But hey, I guess they got beat by City by six or something like that. But that was FA Cup, I believe. So the match itself, I mean, at this point, it's like club don't care about the goals anymore. He just won the points, hoping that somebody would do us a favor like West Ham did, and then we would just beat City with points. I mean, right now, I think the ref, that goal going in messes up. It threw us off a little bit. That means now we had to uh, try to get our mind to score without getting scored on. So it changed a little bit of dynamic of the game. If it was 0-0 going in, I think we would have scored more goals. But 
the fact that we work ourselves hard to get the um, the equalizer and then scoring the second goal, eventually Klopp was like, no, but there's no need for you guys to over push. And then they hit us a counter and then they draw. So we wanted to leave them with win. And that's exactly what we did. Very excited about that. Sunday is going to be crazy because I'm trying to do a live, guys. You know, I might need some help, but, you know, I'm going to try to do the live uh, viewing of the match and, you know, have people comment or whatever. Hopefully people will join me. But, hey, LFC won. We are excited. One point behind C, Steven Gerrard, Coutinho, Inks. It's what ball is in your court. So I hope you guys take over and do us a favor. Um, Arsenal played uh, Newcastle on Monday, which Arsenal did not leave uh, Emirates because Newcastle bossed them, outran them. I mean, they had no answers. They are very lucky to get out there with a 2-0. It should have been at least four or five. This was embarrassing. These people thought that they're just going to show up and then just going to win. You want to be with the big boys, you got to play like a big boys. And when you play like a big boy, there's no... Today, we're going to play good, and then next game, eh, no, 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 no. Consistently, consistent. Look, Liverpool are 89, City are 90. Any other year, 5, 10, 20 years ago, Liverpool have won the league, or City has already won the league four or five matches ago. But no, you can't. So right now, you have to play. Yeah, Ateta is part of it, but the fans, you guys make it too easy for everybody else to banter you guys. And we don't know what to tell you guys. Until the whistle is blown, the game is not over. Until the season is over, the season is still going. And you guys thought you already made top four. It doesn't work like that. But that was a very, very embarrassing, embarrassing um, showing on how you guys showed up at St. James Park to play Newcastle. You guys thought why? Because they almost got relegated. You guys had a Oh, man, that was embarrassing. Newcastle is going to be a problem. So whatever you guys are doing, make sure that you have Newcastle put in it. Because when they spend that more money, they can spend $300 million this summer. Uh, tomorrow, I think there's more matches coming up. Everton and Crystal Palace are playing. Aston Villa is playing Burnley. And Chelsea is playing Leicester City. Yeah, Everton is that win. If they win, they are safe. If they don't, they have to go to the final day of the on Sunday and hope that they can beat Arsenal. Arsenal is trying to hoping that Norwich will beat Spurs so that they could make it to the Champions League. So this game, yeah, it's not over. If everything lose or draw a tie, it's over. It's not going to make us... Burnley might surprise Aston Villa. Aston Villa has not been doing well lately. So uh, Chelsea and uh, Leicester City, yeah, it means nothing. Chelsea already qualified for Champions League, so they're good. Uh, so yeah, guys, thank you so much. We'll be back on Thursday for the Sunday reviews. I mean, previews of what's called the final day, championship day, relegation day, top four day, whatever you want to call it. But uh, yes, Liverpool, we move on. Hopefully we make it. Hopefully Aston Villa do something. And uh, you know, the quad is still alive. Champions League next week on the 28th. We keep going. We keep going. We haven't given up the fight. Sunday, something is going to happen. I have that feeling. Something is going to happen. I'm not just going to... That's what I'm going to say. Quasi Bold, Archie. Don't forget, subscribe, like, notification bell. Peace.